<laughs> Welcome to the Escapist Corner. This is the uh, eighth or ninth uh, episode. Uh, today we have enormously special guests uh, from uh, the northern part of Scandinavia um, on the island of uh, Iceland. <laughs> Um, we have two twins uh, that are elite, uh, or uh, used to be at least elite crossfitters, um, with a with a uh, yeah quite interesting resume. We welcome uh, Elin and Jakobina. Welcome to the show. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, um, first of all, uh, for yeah, for the viewers to. Uh, in the YouTube channel, uh, we have to probably present ourselves. Uh, no, you have to present yourself. Yeah. I think people know it from a couple of chapters ago, yeah. but you have to present yourselves and a little bit tell us about yourselves, uh, why this is important for us. They, they just give us away your elevator pitch. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, my name is Erlin. And I'm 31 years old. I, I have one son who's three years old almost. And then one son on the way. So I'm 31 week pregnant. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just recently moved back to Iceland after seven years in Stockholm. Uh, my husband, Nume, he is a co-owner of CrossFit Nordic in Stockholm. Uh, and... We just we needed some reason to move back to Iceland. <laughs> so we basically looked after some local when we were here last summer and we found it. So we knocked on some doors and asked if we could rent the house that we found here in Reykjavik. And yeah, that's why we are in Iceland. And our dream was to open a CrossFit box together with my sister, twin sister, and her husband or her family basically okay so this is a family company so just before Jacobina you start how mm -hmm. does it work with uh your husband is still owner of CrossFit Nordic so yes, he's, yeah how is the he's travel act doing yeah how is, how he's, he's actually that? yeah he's still a co-owner but he's, he's he wants to sell his part oh, okay because we think we're going to stay in Iceland for at least some oh, more years, so it's hard to go yeah. back and nice. forth. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good. So he's leaving. Uh, what's her name? Jenny. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny and Rikard. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and Mats, uh, he's out of the picture since long. Or. Yes, he's. Yes, he's. Yeah. It, Jenny basically bought his part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Didn't uh, need him anymore. No. I'm <laughs> uh, we have Jacobina. Yes, my name is Jakobina, and um, I'm also 31 years old, and I'm Erling's twin sister. Um, so I've been living in Iceland my whole life. Um, I've been I've been doing CrossFit for almost eight years now. Um, I've been working as a CrossFit coach for um, more than five years. So I was uh, I was a coach in CrossFit Reykjavik. But I stopped working there in the beginning of January when I opened this box here, Grande 101. Mm -hmm. um, I also have one son who is three and a half, just like your child. <laughs> and I have one son also on the way, another son. I'm I'm 24 weeks pregnant now. Yes, we're really <laughs> together. <laughs> we're together, very good. Yeah. Uh, um, it, it, it's like that. It's, it's kind of... It sticks. It's like a. It's like a flu. No, it's yeah. A, it's a very nice flu. I they have two kids. It's very good. <laughs> Question is, how does it go? Because I I know it from my part. Um, but I do think there's a str super strong connection between my kids and her mother in a way that I can. I maybe could never have it. I spend a lot of times with them. I spend months just or the whole day with them. I just it's one of the best uh, times of my life. But for a mother, it's different. I mean, the kid always needs a mother, is it? Uh, yeah. So how is it to just start a new business? Uh, in the case of Aline, it's moved to a new city uh, mm -hmm. and be pregnant and be expecting new kids. I mean, how 
how big, because already the change is big, you start a new business, a big change, a new city is a big change, and a second kid is a huge change. How do you go day by day or how do you plan for the next couple of months? Yeah, it's actually, it's been really hard. <laughs> it's been harder than I expected, actually. Uh, also, just because the body, I'm going through a lot of changes, it's hormones and everything. Um, but I know all of those. I, yeah, I try. But <laughs> I mean, you know, you know how it works. It's it's hard to start a new business. No, yeah. you have to just think about everything, and it's so much more than you think in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's going well. It's going great now. I would say uh, we are just we are moving to a new apartment, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so I mean the business is going really good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've so, seen that. It's uh, yes, booming. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually with uh, our son and both of our sons are staying a lot of uh, spending a lot of time mm -hmm. here at the box because the kindergarten is closed <laughs> for <Okay>. the summer. <laughs> so it's just yeah, it's it's been hard but it's going well. So I think it's getting more easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Every week it's getting yeah, easier. It's, it's getting easier. And now we have more coaches, so we are not just the owners just we are not only coaching, so coaching here, and we have some people here working for us. Yeah. So yeah, we we're kind of in that stage looking for coaches, and because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and and in that sense, I really kind of say our kids spend a lot of time here. I mean, yeah. uh, every time I pick up my kid or my wife picks my kid at, uh, from the kindergarten, the first thing he says, "Oh, are we going to the box now?" Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or Saturday today, go to the box. Yes, I go to the box, and it's amazing. Yeah. Movie. And it's so they good really to like it. Yeah, I say they yeah. see how to grow. They're growing with people, meeting new people, meeting excited people, moving around and everything. So it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I think it's a quite good kindergarten <laughs> in that sense no. also. But um, yeah, so what uh, what made you the crazy idea to, to open up a box? I mean, um, you said <laughs> I mean, that this, you need an excuse to, to get back to Iceland, to the because uh, uh, I mean there's a there's a there's a significant uh, or significant it's there's a difference in uh, if you look at like weather wise uh, it's not as cold but it's a lot more wind uh, yeah we know yeah and the summer has been like <laughs> the rain rainy. a lot <laughs> it's, yeah it's very uh, gray yeah. outside right now and raining and the the oh, just like Berlin yeah the, yeah yeah the, I think it's the, pretty the, similar the in Europe winter is long uh, yeah. yeah, I, I was I was in Iceland last year uh, um, uh, for one week, and uh, my friend told me that uh, you are so lucky. We had 19, 20 uh, degrees Celsius centigrade uh, for one week, and it was sunny and nice. And he was like, "That never happened before." No, <laughs> no. it never happened. It never happened. It was this supposed be to be sunny history, this weekend. <laughs> yeah. But it's just raining now. No, we didn't. We didn't move because of the weather. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> we only moved because of our family. Yeah. Okay. So we felt like we needed to decide: Are we going to stay in Stockholm or are we going to move back to Iceland? Yeah. How long were you living in Stockholm? For seven years. Okay. And uh, did you find there was a uh, like a big difference in culture-wise? Because uh, no, no. No. That you could. Uh, Very similar. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and we we were so lucky. We met so many great friends through CrossFit Nordic. Yeah. So we had a lot of Swedish friends, and we yeah. still have. Yeah. So I mean, we miss them a lot. We miss Stockholm a lot. Yeah. I have to admit that we thought sometimes after we moved, especially in March, April. I mean, what were we thinking? <laughs> we just want to go back. <laughs> this is a bad dream. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're really thinking that, that, I mean, the planning could be great, but the reality kicks in. It's like, whoa, yeah, why are we, why are we thinking? <laughs> and it, no. it's, a, it's a lot, especially when, I mean, I have my sister who's also my best friend, and then my husband, we're all doing this together, and it's sometimes it's just a lot. <laughs> it can it's be a, very hard. It can <laughs> be very, really hard. In, intense, yeah. No, it, it is. Yeah. It's intense to, uh, I mean, it's intense to have a business, uh, business partners. But it's also intense to have families sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, no. yeah, we know this also by when you're always interacting, always interacting. Sometimes yeah. it's kind of okay. Yeah, but in that sense, I mean, 
uh, I'm lucky enough that I have Richard, but Richard also goes home and he's not, he's not my family. I mean, yeah. no, but how <laughs> you, you can also meet other how, people. How, how do you make it possible? Uh, how do you make the division with your husbands to be able to say, okay, this is work and this is home? Now which, you're clean. At which point <laughs> you, you make that division? Yeah, it's, it's very hard actually. Because we're like, when you're like meeting in some family parties or something like that, we're always talking about CrossFit and we're always talking about our business. So it's like, it's like, yeah, so much just talking about that mm-hmm. now. But it's always been like that because we've all been doing CrossFit for many years. Mm-hmm. So it's the focus has re- has been on CrossFit for like many parts, yeah. but now it's very now it's on our business basically. Okay. But it's like we're usually like we usually agree on things, but sometimes not. <laughs> so that's the hardest part. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, I, I you're also it... just learning through this process. Because yeah. we're always learning yeah. and just how to like interact and yeah. stuff how, like that. Yeah, and how, I mean, how much of this, because you've been, uh, been, been, cro- been CrossFit, uh, like a high level CrossFit, been to the games a couple of times, but so mm-hmm. high level athlete, uh, coach, but then uh, you already have one owner of CrossFit in a group. So how much power kind of, uh, how do you con- manage that relationship? Is more it's leading the way and you have more like a take opinions and he just says, nah, no, that doesn't work. Or... How does it work? It's interesting to know. I don't. For, yeah. us, for us, it's just new business, so we both have a lot of ideas, and we just try, and then we realize, no, it doesn't work. Or sometimes we say, oh, that worked, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so how that we, works? We really try to just like switch things. Some so some of us are just like focusing on like so we have different roles. So the yeah. Company. So one one is just like focusing on the programming and the coaching. Me and Numi, we are mostly just. Focusing on on the on the co- uh, classes, yeah, okay. and then Erlin is more focusing on like the financial side, yeah, yeah. and the people that are working in the reception and so on. Yeah. So I, we think that's really good. You have to do that to have different roles and everyone know their roles. Exactly. So you yeah. can, the partners can really trust that things are being done, even exactly. if they don't yeah. do it. We exactly. just have to do that. Yeah. yeah and then okay. if we have some like big decisions to make, then of course we talk together and we have meetings and do you, do you have so. like, um, uh, cause I've heard this, um, from several uh, people, uh, with, yeah, you, you divide in roles and so on. And it's very typical in a business. Uh, anyhow, but, um, there's all also the question if there is, a, do you have like a carrot or do you have, uh, like a stick? Yeah. Or a stick. Yeah. Uh, so if somebody doesn't handle their parts, do you have like an agreement saying um, then you have to do, I don't know, 100 burpees on time? Or, <laughs> uh, no, you can do it. That's a good idea. Because, <laughs> um, no, I, and, uh, I, I, I just got the idea from, uh, from uh, listening to Tim Ferriss. He was talking to someone and he, um, he said, like, especially when it comes to having people doing diets and stuff and people that have that are like fail every diet um yeah. as soon as you put like a uh, hundred dollars on on the line you say okay mm-hmm. you know if you if you're gonna eat or you drink one beer during the next 30 days it will cost you a hundred dollars <laughs> and then people t- can tend to stick to their uh yeah. the thing it's not that it's a huge amount of money but it's more like okay I can mm-hmm. actually lose something more than just my, yeah. uh, you know, uh, reputation or my, my charisma, uh, my, yes, we should do this. <laughs> Are you using this? <laughs> do you, do you use that? No, I'm just, I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid now what it's going to be after this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I think, I think that right now we are really like focusing on just, we want our business to flow. Yeah. So we don't, we don't want to like give, what do you say? So we're trying just to keep on going. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to hold back. We'll just keep on going, going through marketing and just trying to do our really very, very best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So right now, I don't think anyone needs like a carrot. Right. <laughs> but later, definitely, we will need something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now yeah. Like everyone is very motivated in the beginning. and Yeah. So, we're all like... Yeah. Yeah. Very passionate and, and yeah. Regarding that, how how, how diffi- uh, different? Because you were 
uh, Elin, you were working in Stockholm, working for a big company. I was, I was actually working in the Icelandic embassy in Stockholm. Okay. And then I was just, I was just training CrossFit. Yes, I, I didn't coach or anything like that. Yeah. And how difficult Stockholm. is the mindset to go from being an employee to being an entrepreneur owner? I mean, that's a huge change. Yes, it is. is I it? think, I think it's a really big step. It's so much harder than I thought. It's just, it's hard to, you have to think about it all the time. You never get like a break. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely harder than I thought. And it's, <laughs> it's just, it's a lot. It's everything. You have to think about everything. It's from cleaning to, you know, the money, the financial side yeah. and yeah. the members and the coaches. And it's, it's just yeah. so it's endless. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, but the list is endless. But it's very fulfilling. That's something. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's it's also just it's it's all worth it. It's all gonna be worth it. Yeah. So we just like the first months was very hard, but now it's getting like easier. Yeah. And I think that will like get easier when like more weeks yeah. goes yeah. by. Yeah. And I think right. we are really really proud. We are really proud of what we we've done. Yeah. 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 And our members are, seem really satisfied. Everyone is like really happy here, and it feels like a real box. Yeah, it's a very good atmosphere. Yeah, nice, very good. We yeah. definitely have to check it out. Yeah, no, next it's time, a... next trip is Iceland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should definitely yeah, come. <laughs> yeah, it's always in the it's always in the plan. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not kidding. It's true. This is always in the plan is to go Iceland, yeah. and we, we yeah. I think we plan it like four times. Just and we're like buying, gonna buy tickets, and something comes up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You but should be able no. to find very cheap ticket right now. It's going to be next year, yeah. Iceland. That's the trip. Yes. Yeah. No, it's very nice. Uh, but yeah, well, if we if we go back in time, um, can if we just start from the beginning, like where where uh, where do you come from? Like, yeah, your twins. Did you do sports together as as kids? Mm-hmm. And yes. Did, and did you compete? <laughs> or, yeah. yeah we did we actually both did all kinds of sports i think we almost tried everything yeah but we were like for the longest part we were swimmers and we both competed as okay. swimmers okay. so it was i think i ellen we she stopped swimming a little bit before me around 17 yeah and i stopped around 18 or 19 okay 18 probably Okay. And yeah, so after that, it was like you're just going working out like the many yeah, people do. That, yeah. yeah, and then then we worked both as a spinning instructors. Yes, <laughs> for some years we were doing spinning yeah. for a long time for almost six years, I think. Okay, spinning and body pump. <laughs> okay, done that. <laughs> just to- yeah. to- toning the body, <laughs> toning the muscles. Yeah, love <laughs> so spinning. Yeah, but then it was just. I just saw some people was running when I was just in the gym on the running runner or something. And I just saw some people running past me always. They were having some weight plates outside. outside yeah. yeah. So that was CrossFit. <laughs> and that when like, I've been watching them for like a few weeks, then I decided to try it. What year and is this? More or that less? was 2009, I think. Okay. So early so, yeah. CrossFit. In August 2009. Yeah. yeah, I remember day. Can you remember your first workout? This is like like a typical CrossFit word. No, I don't remember no. my first <laughs> workout. But I just remember I I just I went to classes always when there was some running or some cardio workout. I hated the lifting side, okay. so I just I skipped class when there was like deadlifts or Olympic weightlifting because I really didn't like that. <laughs> I was just very like skinny. I hadn't been lifting. Okay. Just like ever so so it was like my first year i was just i went to classes when i knew it was something i liked like running and some body weight movements yeah don't say burpees please don't say burpees <laughs> no <laughs> burpees, burpees, burpees. Yeah, burpees. <laughs> <laughs> i like i like burpees and i started doing crossfit <laughs> not anymore <laughs> what and uh and that i i guess it changed uh, yeah it changed a lot <laughs> It's been today. I like the lifting part so much more than the body weight stuff, <laughs> the cardio. Yeah, it's just yeah. The Olympic weightlifting are like my something I like the most. 
That, that's usually something that happens with a lot of crossfitters that they become these uh, weightlifting monkeys instead of yeah <laughs> yeah but I, think, yeah. I think it happens a lot also, and we've seen this with uh, a lot of women. They started with this view that weightlifting, oh, I don't want to get big, I don't want to get muscles yeah. and everything. Yeah, I hear that a lot. And, and some, at one point, they just start doing it, and they f it feels amazing. I mean, I, I never done that yeah. much before, and now I do it, and it's amazing, and now they want to get more muscles and everything. Um, yeah. What's kind of the same for you, both of you, in that sense? The ones yeah, you know I think it, we were you, just, yeah, yeah, I actually, I never thought about it that way. We were both just very skinny, yeah, probably bo both are, still are in like in this CrossFit sense, but we were like both just spinning, running, and never lifting anything. So when we, I think, I, if I talk for myself, when I started lifting, I really felt the difference on my, like just feeling some muscles coming. I didn't feel like I was getting big or anything, but I was just, Mm -hmm. I really felt like it was um, doing something for me. Yeah, okay. I've actually I've never felt big either. But Jakobina started doing CrossFit almost a year before me, because uh, myself and Nume, my husband, we started doing CrossFit and we moved to Stockholm. Then they actually didn't have any CrossFit box. <laughs> 2010, in the beginning of the year 2010. Yeah. So we waited until CrossFit Nordic opened. Yeah. Uh, in March, I think that year. I actually remember my first CrossFit workout. It was anti. <laughs> one crazy workout. Yeah, that's one crazy <laughs> workout. I, I don't Do you have remember that one. it? It's no. 100, 100 uh, pull ups, oh, 100, Angie, yeah. push -ups. Angie, yeah. 100, yeah. 100 push ups, 100 uh, squats, uh, something else. And 100 sit ups. Sit -ups. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it's a very good know. first workout. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. but it's I think I would recommend it for anyone. Yeah. But I just <laughs> remembered, I remember how strong she had become. And doing, you know, the pull-ups and yeah. toes to bar, and <laughs> and I really, I just, I just wanted to do the same. Yeah. So I only thought about being like, I wanted to be stronger. Yeah. Okay. And that's basically how I think about it. I want to become stronger, not I don't think about becoming bigger. Yeah. Because and it's like, but we don't become that much bigger. We just, you just don't just get like yeah, anything. Yeah. It's yeah, you get better. I mean, exactly. Big. And to get Be bigger, I mean, faster. these people. I mean, it's, this is something that we always say. In order to get bigger, because they see pictures of some mm. athletes and they say, "Oh no, but she's so big." Yeah, but yeah. she trains eight hours a day, and yeah. she trains yeah. for. She's been training for eight years, so you don't, you don't, you won't get there. Don't worry, you're gonna be no, okay. Yeah. You, you're just gonna be stronger, fitter, and healthier. I actually had this <laughs> conversation with Jenny at CrossFit Nordic. Yeah. And, and uh, we talked about this, and she was like, getting frustrated and started to shake. Like, these girls don't know how much these biceps has been. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> how much work it is. Uh, yeah, it's, but it's it's really hard. Yeah. So it's usually the, the smallest girls that worry the most. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah, not... yeah. I've heard the billion times and I'm like, do you think I'm big? <laughs> yeah. I've been lifting for like seven years or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah not... um, so uh, so uh, uh, how did you, did you see yourself going into like the fitness world of, you know, uh, I mean, it was earlier for, uh, for, or you both did the spinning classes, right? So yeah. that was your kind of, uh, introductory to being in the fitness scene, uh, in the world. But I, I guess you had some other dreams also, or some kind of other plans that I'm gonna, uh, work with this when I get old or big or, or um, no. Or <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 nothing. I like. like. Yeah, maybe yes. Yeah, I, 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 I used to like. I have a, a BS in psychology, yeah, and master in gender studies. So okay. I kind of like. I just went different path from that. <laughs> when I started coaching, I was just like, uh, they were opening a new box in Iceland and offered me a job as one of the head coaches in Cross Katla. That was a new box in Iceland a few years ago. Yeah. So I was like, I opened it with one boy, or we opened it together, and then uh, after I'd been there for like uh, almost two years, um, they offered me a job as a full-time coach in Cross Reykjavik, and then I moved from Cross Katla. Cross Reykjavik had always been my box. I was I was actually the first member there oh, okay. in Cross Reykjavik. I started in a box called Cross Iceland. 
that that doesn't exist anymore. But um, yeah, so I, I have been competing with Closet Break Eric, and even though I was coaching in this new box, Closet Katla. Oh, okay. So I decided to go move from Closet Katla to Closet Break Eric again. And um, yeah, so somehow just I hadn't planned on being a Closet coach or anything, just somehow happened. And this spinning thing, it was just something we were doing with school, basically. Yeah. But, uh, and this is probably, it's a huge difference, don't get me wrong. And uh, But being a coach is not that far away from being a psychologist. How many people come no. to you? And ask <laughs> really you for, uh, ask, ask you for, I mean, they ask you for everything from advice, yeah. personal level, professional Sometimes level. Sometimes I really feel like I'm working like a psychologist. <laughs> Yeah. I really do. Yeah, good to know I'm not the so, <laughs> Yeah, it's something I think many coaches know. Because you're like, you have you have all kinds of people who like um, asking you and just like telling you things they wouldn't tell anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it, it, it definitely helps me ha to have that education. And how is that uh, on Iceland? I mean... Um, like uh, Reykjavik has, I think, you're the seventh box or something like that, right? Uh, and you have, uh, I'm not sure how many, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, and it's like a population of um, uh, 100,000 that live in the Reykjavik. We have 200,000 living in Reykjavik. Okay. It's 300,000 in Iceland. 200,000 in the big Reykjavik area. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, to have seven boxes in, in that population is kind of also... It's very crowded. Yeah, yeah. but it, it really also connects a lot of people. Uh, yeah. I assume. We have many people doing crosses in Iceland. It's like, in Iceland, it's like every, everyone is so connected. So it's like, if something gets popular, like everyone wants to try it out, starts doing it. Yeah. Um, our box is actually in the west side of Reykjavik. So we have we don't have any box close Boxes by. Yeah. So it's like we're just downtown Reykjavik actually, just one on one Reykjavik, and we we don't have that many gyms either nearby. Oh. Okay. So that's really good. This is why this. What do you say? One of, well, one of the reasons why or why is the fact that you have so many big CrossFit athletes in Iceland from such a small population. Uh, yeah. Is, what would you say I think it what? has also something to do with just how few people live in Iceland. Just like it's so easy to to like connect to the good athletes. You can start training with them. Like mm. like I know Katrin uh, someday told me she was like it was easy for her to just watch like Annie. Mm. So Annie had been Katrin's coach, and they were, she was like she just starts to train with Annie. So it was so easy for her to be mm. like. Wow, I can be like her. Mm. Why shouldn't I be able to be like this girl who I'm training with? So it's like yeah, I've, I've seen. I think it's, of... yeah, I think it's just something yeah. to do. It's just it's not just the water in Iceland. No. I think it's <laughs> also just. And we have we have a lot of role role models in the CrossFit world, yeah. Icelandic exactly. Annie, yeah. Ragnheiður Sara, Katrín, Björgvin, yeah, Þuri, yeah, Thury. yeah, mm. yeah. So. I mean, I was reading really uh, I was reading now that a couple of years ago there were all the almost all the Icelandics from Europe going to the games at one point. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. I think it's also started pretty early in Iceland. Yeah. So it's like people have been doing crosses for many years here, or many people have been doing for Eight many years. years. Yeah. 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 I heard. It started I, 2008 in Iceland. I yeah. heard from my friend uh, when Annie won the. Uh, or did she, no? She didn't want the game. The, the game. The, fir the, first, the time. first time she went to the games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, he told me that they're somehow uh, uh, related. <laughs> that is not very <laughs> uncommon on Iceland, but uh, there are some some connections there in family. So uh, he said, "Yo, know, she she got like super big uh, from that competition, even though CrossFit was not a yeah. particularly big sport. It was just yeah, yeah." But That's like, right. b because a small nation, you kind of celebrate the small. Uh, I know this uh, for Sweden also. Like, when Sweden wins, uh, when Sweden won bronze medal in football '94, this is something people sing about oh. all, uh, still. 
And it's yeah. like for 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 Germany, talk about bronze is like what? Yeah, we failed. Yeah, yeah we failed. <laughs> yeah. Know. So um, we. It's gonna... different. Yeah. <laughs> did Did you see how it was when we? Yeah, uh, the European the champions in football for Iceland. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't even win a medal. <laughs> but, but they, I think there was at one point they were uh, they were saying, and this is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they were saying that uh, uh, and probably yeah, 10% of the population was in the stadium at one point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was but, like yeah, that. Like 30,000 mm -hmm. people were in they the just, stadium yeah. or more. Uh, Flew to yeah. France and what? So many what's people just went there. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Crazy. Yeah, that was, we, uh, I remember the footage uh, was... It's funny. It's funny when it when it uh, like a society can come together uh, in that sense. Um, yeah, definitely. For sure, good. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, where where was I? Drifting away. Yeah, I'm drifting away. <laughs> as I'm always doing. Um, so uh, let's 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 talk about a bit more about this uh, uh, phenomenon that is not a phenomenon, uh, but to be actually uh, to have this twin relationship but now uh, as you said seven years apart uh, what kind of effect does that have because I guess like before that it's very you know that's the first person you share a lot of things it's a very special re relationship yeah. you, you don't have that with Bro uh, like brothers or siblings otherwise uh, so how was that to like I, I break apart for yeah it was, it was very hard actually yeah I, I remember when the day she moved to Stockholm I was like I just want to cry <laughs> it's like I really felt like some part of me had just gone yeah but then it just we kind of got used to it or I at least I just yeah she, like after she had been there for two or three years it's just like We really we spoke regularly on the phone and of yeah. course you have all this technique today so it's easy to be in touch yeah um i also visit her with her sometimes not too many times though but, and sorry, she came sorry, to iceland of course sorry for my ignorance but how far is I uh, Reykjavik from stockholm it's three hours with plane oh, okay. okay yeah so it's not that far it's like from berlin yeah okay. yeah so and we we did visit iceland a lot Yeah. So and yeah, I think I think we spoke almost every day, but it didn't. I mean, now when I moved moved back, it 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 didn't it doesn't seem like that it was seven years. <laughs> yeah. It feels yeah. more like maybe two years. Yeah, yeah, it happens a lot yeah. when you have these That's special relationships. Now that you just you're able to just even though you don't see each other for uh, let's say a year, I have it with me with friends, they just go back and say, hey, what did you do last week? I mean, it's just yeah, like, exactly. yeah. It's yeah, so, the like confidence that. and the level of knowledge is so big that yeah. it's like nothing happens. Yeah, actually, I thought it was maybe harder when she had her child, Christopher, because yeah. I just, it's so strange not being there. Yeah. Just oh, meeting yeah. him and, and they grow up so fast. <sighs> It changed a lot, and it's definitely mm -hmm. yeah. so it's yeah, and it's when when he didn't like know me or but or they got confused. <laughs> <laughs> More like that, like yeah. who are you? <laughs> How did they get along, both kids? Yes, they're <laughs> it's been like very. They're hard almost hard. like they're like brothers. They fight a lot, ah, and, okay. yeah, but that's and good. they're like yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, well, but it's getting better actually now when they're getting older. It's just, that's also school to uh, to uh, for kids to go through, I, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I I I I, th I think you probably also have that experience growing up. Uh, <laughs> where, yeah. Where you also <laughs> had to had some arguments. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see how we're, where we we're going. <laughs> um, so. Um, if we go to the to the box uh, again um, to run to run a new uh, yeah business and everything and I mean uh, Nomi he had uh, experience from running the business before and you had uh, Jakobina the the experience from Katla also mm -hmm. uh, from from that. Uh, was that uh, the thing that made it like so obvious that this is the kind of business we could uh, we could do together? Mm -hmm. Or so it wasn't like 
So we were, we were like, when Ellen and Numi were in Iceland, when we were just visiting Iceland, we were always talking about it and or mostly our, our dad was talking about it. You should just open a box together. Ellen and Numi, you should move to Iceland and you should just open a crochet box together. And there's something you're like, ah, oh, yeah, laughing about. And yeah, it be, would be fun. But so something I really, I really never thought we would do it because it's just such a big step. And yeah, so... But when, when they were here last summer and they were like, uh, we found a place uh, downtown Reykjavik just next to the harbor. It was so great. Um, I think no one's there. So we should just check it out. And then we just, they started to check it out. And we were also, they went home again. And we were like, just trying to find out who like had this place and if we could get it maybe. And then it was like, uh, it went for sale and then it wasn't for sale. So it was like, we, we didn't know anything until in October last year. And it was like, it's ours. And we were like, oh my God, are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? Yeah. And it was like, for they, they, they Elin and Nume lived in, living in Stockholm, having their jobs, like they had to move away from everything. And it was also hard for me, been, been being in Cross Reykjavik for all these years, like having all my just best friends and basically my family there yeah. and also knowing like the owners of course yeah. who are my friends also and who are my friends i hope today also but yeah. like it was it was kind of hard like decision to make even though we were like we have to do it yeah. so we are going to do it even though we were all like pretty pretty yeah we, i think we were a bit afraid of doing it though yeah but it's, it's not an we just decision. had to somehow. Yeah, it was it was a really big step. But uh, Nume, my husband, had all, always talked about I'm not going to move to Iceland unless I have something to do, and I don't want to work at a crossfit box as a coach. <laughs> then I want to own it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he always said that. Yeah. And it's also in crossfit Nordic. They have like they have like different ideas about the training, about the members. Yeah. And here in Iceland, so it was mm -hmm. pretty good to have like Jakobina. She has like she know how she, how how it works here mm -hmm. yeah. in Iceland, and then Nume with his like different ideas and how they've been running it in Stockholm. Yeah. So we we knew we had something good. Yeah, I we knew I, that. I I actually made made a like a head notice when I was uh, in Reykjavik also, and I. I think I saw it in, in your box also how you a bit of the programming that you uh, you're very uh, uh, emphasize the scaling uh, options uh, for 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 a workout if it's a uh, you have like the different uh, how to say levels. Uh, yes, in Cross Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like that yeah. in Cross Reykjavik. It's different here in Grande. We just we have fewer members in class, so. Yeah. We just and we really focus on having good coaches. So coaches who has like they all our coaches all have a lot of experience. So we really just they tell people how to scale. We don't have it like um, written down, written down yeah. on our on Wattify or something like that. Even yeah. though we have Wattify, yeah. we just we have the basic workout and then we tell people what to do. Yeah. So it's like fewer members, so we are able to tell each and everyone so you should do it like this. You should have this weight. And this is what you're going to do today. Yeah. So uh, it's a bit different. That's yeah, actually I don't more know. From, yeah. from Nordic. I don't know if you've seen our programming, but it's, I would say it, it's not like the basic CrossFit exercises all the time. We do a lot of rotation exercises, mobility. Yeah. So it's, it's a little different. It's not, we, we are not using the, this phone booth. CrossFit, like, like they call it, like they call it, like just you have movements up and down. Yeah, up and You're down, more yeah. fine to go like, Not like yeah, working yeah. on the little, little muscles and no. yeah. On your experience, uh, being an athlete, being a CrossFit coach for so many years, uh, having a, a husband, having a new uh, that owns a CrossFit box, now owning a new box, what is the top thing or the most important thing when you own a, a CrossFit for a CrossFit to succeed, what's the most important thing? Mm, I think I think it's very important for uh, the owners to stay in touch with their members, like just being there and and also being coaches. So I think it's like just 
getting the, this good atmosphere. I think it's very important for people who like they have to have they have to enjoy being yeah. like in classes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not just having a good workout. It's also just like they have to like going to the box. Yeah. So if you want to have like if you want members to stay at your box, they have to really really like it. Yeah. So it's like we have so many people coming here who has been just have been doing some basic training in some big um, gyms here in Iceland and they're like it's so much fun it's so I've never been like I've just been looking forward the whole day to come training yeah so that's something we really want people to find so it's like it's actually fun it's not just they're not just feeling the difference and feeling good in their body because they're like training yeah. It's more like I really like it. It's yeah. fun. I want to go training it's because the com community. I want to meet the people. Yeah. I want to meet the coaches and the staff. So it's the fun part. So also. I, guess, I guess this was uh, it has also been a difference than uh, like the uh, class sizes. Then uh, has yeah. also an effect because if you have a class with uh, twenty plus people, it's going to be very hard to uh, even say everyone's name during yeah. the class. Mm, yeah. I think it's very important also if you're a coach that you like interact with each and everyone in each class. Yeah. So you like you have to talk, even though you're just like telling telling him or her she's doing good or yeah. something you can change or something like that. If you just you have to interact with everyone in your class, yeah. <laughs> it's very important. I think. No, it's something we also yeah we we have do here. So at least you have to do. Uh, two positives and one correction for every member yeah. in every class. It's kind of a that's very good. You have to you have to force you and charge you, challenge yourself to 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 do it. I mean, yeah. yeah. And like if you're like, be like compliment people, tell them they're doing good or tell them they, they're doing better or something. Yeah. that's very good. Yeah, we have the, we're fortunate because we we have very small classes. We have just up to eight or ten people, depend, yeah. depending on the program. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in that sense, it's it really gets to the um, how do you say? Yeah, we we have the, the time to do that in the classes to really talk to everyone yeah. and each other. It go, very fast. People also get to know each other, of course. Uh, yeah. But um, uh, yeah, talking about programming, uh, I saw just like we 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 realized like yesterday uh, that. We have a lot of programs, okay. So um, I also saw you. You're all having like the like a parents or mama mama fit. Yeah, as yes. You call it. We yeah, have, mama fit. We have we have something that we call super su parents. super parents, uh, and because uh, we just we want to, the dads also to uh, yeah <laughs> get, get rid of the beer belly. So um, <laughs> we're not excluding anyone, but um, uh, we have like a fitness more cardio uh, workouts in that sense longer yeah. metcons um yeah more running and yeah, those kind of stuff weight lifting part of it yeah and then we yeah, exactly we have the like the regular crossfit program yeah. we have the we have a boot camp program we have uh what was it more uh <laughs> yeah. do you have that in your box yeah yeah Oh wow! And we have we actually we have another program. We ju don't have just CrossFit. We have also Granta Fit. Yeah, it's just more Let's like go. Granta Fit. G Granta Fit. That means the yeah. alley fitness, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's like our it's name. It's just our name and then fit. Yeah. Okay. So that's of CrossFit. that's like okay. less technique, more yeah. like more like longer workouts, more cardio based. No Olympic lifting. No Olympic weightlifting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In that sense, that would you call it that like an introductory class, or it's more like for us, it's for no, you, it's, yeah. it's for people. I mean, usually it's women. Like I we said before, they don't want to get in touch with the barber yeah. at the beginning. They mm -hmm. kind of start with they alone themselves. They just channel themselves into this path and until they feel comfortable with it, and they start with. Yeah, the that's our our. That's what we are thinking. Also, like people can start in the ground of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because many people in Iceland actually, even though it's very popular and big in Iceland, so many people don't know what CrossFit is. <laughs> many people think it's like CrossFit. If you're doing CrossFit, you have to compete. Oh, yeah. So no, okay. if you are doing CrossFit, you you want to be an elite, elite athlete. So like people are like, yes, I would like this other thing. Like <laughs> that that could be something for me. So people like we have people from 
another box here in Iceland who just it's called Mjölnir. I'm not sure if you know what it is. Like they have MMR. Ha- and hammer. Mjölnir yeah. is the hammer. Exactly. It's same, so it's, same that's word more like they're just working with kettlebells and make more and more weight and cardio exercises. Yeah. Okay. So we have had so many people from there coming to us now, yeah. and they all started with just don't liking the bars, but today that's their favorite. No. <laughs> so that's what we were like looking at. Yeah, people will start there and then they will like try the bar or something and they were like, oh, this is so much fun. Yeah. Yes, but at our uh, at our box you can go attend both classes so okay. you can choose. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean we, um, most people that do the fitness classes uh, at our place, we call them um, body fitness. Uh, they come here and they look at the program on the on the board and they're like is that our program and it's a, you see like a 40 minutes of yeah pain and drool, drooling at the end mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, then you see the crossfit program which is like a uh, three five minutes and the yeah yeah so that usually usually is the selling point for the crossfit programs um mm-hmm. uh, that they say see that no but um we just by by having all of these programs is that you kind of the amount of programming you have to do and in one sense it's like should you do your own programming or is it I mean just you can go to a, any CrossFit gym uh, homepage and you just copy boom 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 and mm-hmm. th- there you go but um, yeah I think what many people don't understand is how much. Um, like, like uh, the uh, part of the passion li- lies within the programming with yeah. many box owners i think mm-hmm. that you want to kind of if you say you, you're doing the mobility classes and stuff it's the same uh, for us we are also i just did uh kelly storette um uh 102 class with kelly and uh we uh we started to implement that also of course and like hey we have to fix this. People, people can't lift weights because they are just, uh, you know, immobile. They're stiff and yeah, uh, yeah. and they're like, well, oh, this hurts and everything. And they're, you know, limping for years. And it's like, yeah. dude, you don't have to do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. and uh, it's also about also uh, you target to your audience. I mean, the, you know, your people are going to your box. Do you know how, the, how is the people are going to your box? What the problems they have? And what can you program? It doesn't make any sense for us here, for example, to program no. muscle ups when no, no. It's, the same. One, it's almost one, the same for us. One, when one member can do it, so yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, I think I think the programming it changes like when the months and years go by. Yeah. Like when you're like when you've been doing well, well like cross Reykjavik, they have just many people have been doing cross for so long time. So like they can program muscle up. But it's like harder for us to have. But we actually some we have some people who've been doing CrossFit for some time, so we have we have been like scaling up so yeah. people can do their muscle ups sometimes. Mm. Yeah. If it's like pull ups or chest to bars or dips or something, they can go up to a muscle up and then they can do their dips or something. No, mm. I, I think that was very. Uh, it's been kind of helpful for my mindset to uh, when when uh, reading like Carl Pauli and uh, talking to him is that yeah how many of the movements are the same movement at, yeah, at the movement end pattern, yeah. Yeah, the exactly. movement pattern and if, yeah. you, if you look at the pull up it's not exactly the, the it's not the same archetype as the muscle up but still you can say kind of the goal with a, a to have a good pull up is to to get to a muscle up mm-hmm. so um uh to implement that thinking is so much e- easier than when you program and you see okay today is an imam whatever for 20 minutes with pull-ups and something and you say you know if you if you're a good athlete yeah do muscle ups uh mm. you can do muscle ups every second mm-hmm. round or every round whatever so yeah uh, and the and the coaches the, the coach should also be able to like break down all the movements so you can like if someone doesn't know how to do something you can just like okay do this thing this is the first step yeah. in the muscle up or this is the first step in the pull up so you can do this instead of doing all this yeah so it's like yeah 
but, you can yeah. break down all but the we ones. have one main goal with our programming it's just we want people to feel good we don't want them to hurt themselves yeah. because that's <laughs> that's something that used to be really like crossfit People are like, were like yeah, always yeah. having some pain. Work we don't want pain. people to have pain. It's like all out yes. or go home or something. Yeah. yeah. If it's it not if all it out or go home. If it, if it doesn't hurt, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Something that yeah. kind of mentality is like, what? It doesn't, yeah. doesn't make any sense. It? No. Yeah. I, I think it's uh, exactly. Uh, but it, it comes to that kind of mobility thinking to, uh, to have that idea mm -hmm. in the head that uh, actually your, your your technique is doing it or your technique is based because of your stiffness and that's why you're doing these compromises in your movements and that's why you mm -hmm. get the, the hot elbows or shoulders and so you don't yeah. have, you don't have to do that and um, no. I think it's uh, still like uh, like the CrossFit uh, one of the main first characters in, in crossfit like the the crossfit pukey yeah uh, mm -hmm. i think I, I don't think it's very good to have people puking we had that a couple of times mm -hmm. but yeah uh, but it, it, it's not it's not a good selling point but to no, at all. But, but for people <laughs> for people to get to really to their limits once in a while really uh exposes them to yeah that life can be hard mm -hmm. Cause, yeah cause a I lot totally of people agree. Don't know. Yeah. yeah it's more like in not every class you don't have to like go all out every class you shouldn't do that that's not good for anyone yeah so so when I talked talked about the mobility I was talking about like we have mobility in our uh, programming our regular programming so yeah. you maybe do heavy lifting and then there are some yoga presses yeah. in between yeah yeah that's good yeah so it's it's different but and i know that some people that started training at grande who had been training some other places before they were like i don't like this yeah. <laughs> when they saw the programming man but then afterwards everyone feels so good yeah. so yeah, people exactly. are just like oh, wow this was awesome yeah no, no, exactly now my shoulder doesn't hurt after the workout yeah exactly but, yeah because usually we just put the I mean, and this is something that we also do sometimes uh is that we just focus the mobility issues on the warm-up on the cool down and then in the middle yeah. of the day we just smash the bodies as much as we can uh, exactly and so many people also feel and this is um, correct me if i'm wrong but so many people think that if i don't end up uh, completely sweaty and mm -hmm. lying on the ground, dying, dying. Yeah. dying. Yeah. Don't feel like I'm dying. If, it, if it wasn't a, a good workout, and it's yeah, no, I mean, there's uh, so many other things you have to work out on it, have to yeah. exactly. practice and stuff. Mm. And, mm. Uh, but how is that when you uh, do like a when you want to be on, say, uh, in CrossFit, it's hard to talk about professional level, but to be an uh, elite level, because uh, um, then you have to really start to train many yeah. many times per day and i mean especially if you if you look at uh uh like sarah or katrin <laughs> they, mm -hmm. they they do insane amount of work every day yeah um and uh how, how do you see that uh because you kind of been through that yourself so do you see that it's sustainable to do that for a longer time or is it just you do that for for the you know the short goal to i, I want to yeah go to the I, th I i think i think like if you want to be like a top um cross athlete yeah. uh, it's i think it can't like last there very long no it's just so much like it's so much work you have to put in there i think I think it's like probably like shorter than many in ma in many other sports. Even though people it seems like people are older in CrossFit than in many other sports, but still it's like so many. Like you have to put so much in there to be yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. So much work. So I'm not sure. I think it's just like so when when you're just all this competition, they're just breaking people down. <laughs> it's like yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure people can stay there for a long time. I don't think so. Yeah, and uh, how 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 was it for you? Like, I mean, you have to enjoy training first of all, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but it's, it's, yeah, I thought like I was I was I I've, I've been to the games three times with my team. Yeah. Um, 
I thought it was it was very hard training two times a day and then working as a full-time coach. So I was like maybe coaching then I trained and then coaching again. It was like it was very hard actually. I was always so tired. Yeah. But just like it's easier if you're a professional professional athlete like Catherine and yeah. Sarah. They have just like Catherine, she has her coats. Um yeah. all the time she just she can ra- rest sleep. in between and, and she go like <laughs> trains and then she eats and she can go do a massage or something and then she like trains again. <laughs> so it's hard if you're like training and you can't even eat and then start yeah. coaching right away yeah. and then training again and you haven't eaten anything or something like so that was something I was like, yeah, I felt like I was just, just training and working and training. And then I had to take care of my son and yeah. also trying to like do something with him. Yeah. It was pretty hard. But you did it for three but, years. So it has but to I be, did, the, yeah, the, the I really did. I, or I liked it. I really, I enjoyed training. Yeah. I wouldn't have yeah. done it the other way. So we have to send, just, send a message like, to Catherine. You have a very long. You, you, you yeah. yeah, she has it very. It's like it was. It was very hard being in Cross Reykjavik, where like yeah. Annie and yeah. sometimes Catherine and some people just like training. Yeah. And they don't work at all. Yeah. Just training. That that's kind of just that's their work. Yeah. They like they have sponsors and they, so they have to like yeah. train a lot. But it's like I went there maybe I woke up at five o'clock, start coaching. And then they were like coming in at nine or ten, yeah. and they were like, "Oh, let's train now." And I was like very tired. <laughs> and then they went to eat and sleep, maybe even. And then I coached again. <laughs> it was like in. sometimes it was very frustrating. I can imagine. Um, mm-hmm. Now you're pregnant, but and you were still competing because last year we saw you on the German throwdown. Yeah, in yeah, November. Oh, we didn't have a picture with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 he has a picture. With yeah, you. I have a picture. No, uh, yeah. and I also I talked to Benedict at at the German Throwdown. Uh, yeah, we were talking just last two uh, two, weeks two, two weeks ago. And yeah, he, uh, he said, yeah, we talked about that that you were uh, there and participating, and uh, we talked a bit about the podcast and so on. He <laughs> uh, then I said, yeah, but you know they're. Uh, uh, Jacobina is uh, is uh, pregnant now. I said, "Oh, but uh, I hope that Anna can do it." So <laughs> I think she's pregnant. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there are other Icelandic. Uh, yeah, so girls so My question and is: then, Are you planning to go back to competing anytime, or is it just kind of a okay? Two kids, uh, two kids, mm-hmm. a new box, a new business. Uh, yeah. I'm done with it. Stop Thank you very much. House. Yeah, I think it's just like I was just using this time now because I'm opening a box, so I was like I couldn't train as much. So I was like, maybe it's a good time to get pregnant now, <laughs> so then yeah. I can start training again yeah. in November. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really, I, I think we like here in Gante, we really want to take a team to to regionals and maybe next year and try to go to the games maybe after two years. Okay, that's like our small goal now the long term goal it's been very nice we have Nume who's like he's been competing as an individual at the games and also okay. with his team so he's like he's always very good yeah. <laughs> so he's like yeah it really how was yeah, that it's actually it's how good he is how, how was that actually what, what kind of uh, did you see any uh, difference in um, or is it any difference between like the Stockholm and uh, Reykjavik mentality between the boxes and so on. Uh, we had this discussion, uh, no, like uh, with, no. with 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 Berlin, is that yeah. uh, Berlin uh, had at least the tendency. We're trying to melt the ice here, guys, um, to get um, the boxes a bit more closer and uh, to talk to each other and you know yeah. um, to do more things together. I think uh, they're very much each box on its own. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then we talk to people from Stockholm. They say it's, it's like a big community. We do things together. We, yeah. uh, we, events, to we train Car- together. Carl yeah. Carl yeah. was telling us. So yeah. So yeah. I think it's it's like it's I think so, it's something we're yeah, experiencing it's, also it's here. Really different in Iceland. Iceland and Nume, yeah. They're like, why? We're really su- surprised. Actually, there's so much competition <laughs> between boxes. Okay. Yeah. So True. it's yeah. We were really Iceland. surprised. Yeah, yeah, and you can't like in Stockholm you can be coats at maybe two or three boxes 
But in Iceland, you can't. No, so Berlin is the German So you good. just have to choose mm. your box and stay yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then, because so. that kind of makes it more understanding also for you to be on uh, in Katla, uh, across with Katla and Reykjavik, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, mm, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> what t-shirt are you going to wear? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I like, yeah, I, I totally agree. It was like, but for me, for to leave Cross with Katla, I kind of was always Cross with Reykjavik. Yeah. It was like I was competing with them, even though I was training in Cross with Katla. It was just yeah. smaller box. They didn't have any elite athletes, so I was there, like, they kind of just let me. Oh, you can compete with them because you wouldn't be able to compete in a team here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it but wasn't. It wasn't like well seen. No, but it didn't end very good. No. Though. Yeah. Um, so I, but I did go to Cross the Reiki when I felt like it, it felt more like my box. Yeah. Um, but it was hard leaving Cross the Reiki, and I'm I'm not going to deny it was like um, I didn't feel good about it because I didn't feel like people around me felt good about it, like the owners yeah. or some of the owners. Like it wasn't very well seen yeah. when I was opening my own box, and of course it's hard if someone of your like of your full-time coach is decides to leave your box and opening his, his yeah, own. So many so people are going to follow she and stuff like that, no? Yeah, it was like, it was hard. But Cross the Reykjavik is a huge box in Iceland and they like, yeah. uh, they're the biggest box by far. I think that's the so, biggest, biggest box in Europe. A, yeah, yeah. I think the biggest box in the world, basically. Yeah. How many people? I think they have yeah. like 1,200 members yeah. or something. But we did get a lot of support. Uh, especially from the smaller boxes in Reykjavik yeah. and around Reykjavik, like yeah. CrossFit XY and CrossFit Hinkit. Yeah. Um, our friends from there, they helped us a lot here when we were opening our box. That's nice. That's good. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. I mean, at the end, you, the, the, uh, at least with our line of thought is that the, the bigger the brand, the better for everyone at the end. No, I mean, yeah. the, the, the bigger CrossFit gets in the world community, the, the more people want to try to try to do CrossFit. Mm -hmm. and it should be like that. So, I mean, we should all work together into it. I mean, yeah, but well, yeah, no, we, we, we but it's also to... always a competition, just yeah. like on the on the playground or on the on the field, and people are competing, even though mm. uh, I was actually just watching something from last year's CrossFit Games, yeah, and I saw like I think that was Matt Fraser and um, and some other guy, and they were just. They were competing and Matt Fraser said something, oh, I just like, I had one lift left and I was going to get you and then I saw you lost yours and I was so happy and so I won you or something like that. And I was like, why don't the girls just talk like that? They're always like, oh, damn, I saw you lost the bar. And I felt so sorry for you. And you're like, no, you didn't. And you're like, yes. It's, it's like, that's how it is. Of course, you want to like win your, yeah, you win. your <laughs> opponent. But yeah, your pe the people you're competing against. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But that's not when you're running a business. You don't want to see anyone fail. No. That's a little bit different, maybe. But I think because Iceland it's, is just it's so better. small and people know each other, and right? it's just it becomes it becomes different. It's mm. gossiping, and it's just the way it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how is it like if you have uh, these uh, athletes from different boxes? Is it very like? Uh, they don't have any good programming there. It's better here. It's. I don't know. No, oh. I'm. No, I guess. Yes, I mean, maybe. Yeah. I but I think people like you always feel very welcome in every box. Is at least here in Iceland. Like if you're visiting a box or you can train everyone, then yeah. it's like everyone is very welcoming. I think. Yeah, because uh, I think like in Stockholm. Uh, Carl said that like the elite athletes from Solid and Nordic and so on that they they also just go, went to each other's boxes and trained yeah. with each other's because yeah, yeah I yeah. need to train with some good and I think like yeah. uh, Numi did that uh, probably with uh, I think there's an uh, on the CrossFit page where he where he does the opens with uh, Lucas. Yeah, they were training together yeah. before uh, before regionals two thousand and. 14? Yeah. <laughs> then they trade together. Yeah. They had the same programming. Yeah. So they trade together at yeah. Nordic or at Solid. So that's really that's really common in Stockholm. Yeah. 
people train and they elite they elite they train at different boxes and try out all kinds of boxes and yeah no, so sure. that's that's really good and I, it's the I, same with the coaches they go they coach at maybe one or two boxes you don't and see it's, that it's nice no one. problem <laughs> <laughs> not yet at least but maybe yeah. it'll happen <laughs> yeah and um uh, going to uh just your box now how how um how big of a classes do you uh tend to do or want to have when you how many people yeah so we we focus on 20 yeah mm -hmm. and do you have so two coaches the maximum then? Or no one one, one. one coach because mm -hmm. then you then you're really really requires a lot from that coach to yeah yeah keep up so it's yeah it's we have good coaches and we have a lot of space yeah no, so that's, that's we why you. we envy you with that a lot of space how big is the box it's a little 11, more than yeah it's around so 1100 square, square meters, meters. So. yeah yeah it's, mm -hmm. so it's really big and it's it's only like one house so we have yeah. have a lot of space outside as well yeah it's That's one nice. big house so we have like locker rooms upstairs and one room for massage who's working for us nice, and nice. i could i yeah. could imagine that <laughs> yeah it's yeah. really it's really great local <laughs> yeah. um so um to go go into the the final part, I, I would wanted to talk about this. Yeah, the fact that you both guys are pregnant and uh, and do train CrossFit. You lift weights, and a lot of people uh, say it might be dangerous. So yeah, um, what, uh, what do you usually say to people uh, like that? If you hear, I don't know if you hear that on in, uh, on mm -hmm. Iceland, but yeah. No, I think I think it's like I we we've of course been pregnant before, and we both trained um, all our pregnancy last time. Ellie even went like two weeks. She she went like forty two weeks pregnant, and she trained the whole time. <laughs> um. So, but um, I think it's like in Iceland, it's actually getting um. More very recognized. common yeah so people have been doing like especially women who's been doing crossfit they all train if they can yeah um i just tell people that of course i wouldn't tell anyone to do all the same thing i'm doing yeah if especially if people haven't been doing crossfit i wouldn't tell them to be doing some handstand push-ups or something being like 24 or five weeks pregnant yeah. but something i've been doing for many years so i really i really just I know how my body works and so I wouldn't do anything to like, I wouldn't take any risk no. and I don't do that now while, while pregnant. Yeah. So I like all my weights are so much lighter now and I, I don't do workouts if I don't feel good doing them. So I just, I think it's very just good for women to listen to their body. Yeah. And I, I, I have a doctor of course and, and he has told me to just do everything I feel good doing. So I, I even competed at the games um, last time I was pregnant. I was eight weeks pregnant, actually, <laughs> when I competed at the games 2013. I just knew I was pregnant the week before I went to LA. Oh. And then my doctor also said, I was like, can I compete? And he was like, yes, just compete. It's nothing, can ha nothing can happen. Like, if it's supposed to be there, yeah. it's going to be there. It's going to stay there. So just drink a lot. Yeah. Eat. Drink a lot of water. Compete. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drink yeah, a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> drink a lot of alcohol. Drink a lot. No. Yeah. Uh, I think it's true. I mean, I, um, I wouldn't tell anybody like a new, like a pregnant woman to start doing crossing maybe because mm -hmm. it's a completely, it's a very shocking thing for the body at the beginning. Yeah. But if you've been doing it for so long, your body's used to it. Uh, any sport, it could, could be crossfit, could be running, could be swimming, yeah. whatever it is. Your body is, it, 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 I think it goes the other way around. Your body needs it a little yeah. bit. Yeah, uh, it really, it's like that. Yeah. I think I would go crazy if I couldn't train. I really would. <laughs> it's like it's yeah. just so important. We just both feel it now. Like if we're like just being pregnant, it's like you're more tired than you're usually. And and just when you go to train, go training, you feel so much better. You feel like 
you have more energy afterwards. Yeah. So it's like something you do just to feel better. Totally agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, who, who do you guys look up to? Someone pregnant or just <laughs> in the general? Yeah, no, in the uh, in the crossroads. No, in general, who is the first one to come up? A couple come up. Um, I don't know. <laughs> no one special. <laughs> no. But I really, I like, I really like Katrin. Yeah. She's like she's one. She's one of my favorite in the crossroads. I know her. She's my friend, but she's just her attitude um, towards everyone and everything. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's like, because I've known her, she was training a little bit in Cross Reykjavik when I was working there, and she was just so, like, smiley and said hello and good morning to everyone, and even when she was training, being, like, that good, and if she wanted someone to train with her, it was, like, always, she just took the next person, next person, just, hey, you want to take a workout with me? Yeah. And then they would just train together, and I thought that was, like... <laughs> That's just how she is. Yeah. She actually came to a workout here at Grante with her coats yeah. and and her mom and just did a regular workout. Yeah. And our our members were like, oh my God, <laughs> she's going to train with us? And she was like, oh yeah. <laughs> it's just, that's, yeah, I really, I look up to yeah. her because she's just like, yeah, <clears throat> no... Oh. Her was, ego isn't that big. <laughs> yeah, I was I was listening this morning uh, to a Ben Bergeron podcast, and he was saying that Catherine is so good because he failed at the regionals, and yeah, uh, and that drive is I mean the yeah. the, the fact that she failed is a, such a big drive in her that I need to succeed now. I want to succeed that mm, that yeah. just throw her up the roof a little bit because probably yeah. what he was saying probably before she, her goal was just I want to go to the games. And now mm -hmm. is I want to win this thing. Yeah. So it's a huge drive in it. I exactly. think I think her attitude helps her a lot. Yeah. She has she really has something here mentally which not many other people have competing at this level. She's like like I talked to her after regionals. She came second at the regionals this year, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm just I'm happy with second place. I really did my best. I think every workout. I'm not sure I could have done better." Or maybe I could, but I'm just, I learned a lot from this. Um, some things went great. Some things might have like been a little bit better, but I'm happy. So this is like, now the, now it's time for the big thing in all the games. Now it comes. I, I think, so that's just how she is. I think the, uh, like also, it's very, very common that people that have something uh, happening to them, for example, that you injure yourself and, and so on, and you can't train as you used to, but yeah. then you can start to train at your kind of weak parts instead, or other parts that you didn't put so much emphasis in. No. Um, yeah. Do you have any like uh, special uh, tips for someone that is pregnant, uh, or things you can work on uh, that is like, okay, because you can't do all the heavy workouts that you did before, but Maybe like the mental game or something like that. I don't know. I would, I mean, if you can move, then you should move. <laughs> Just do something. Go so, swimming or yeah. yoga. And also for the pregnant, like for the women that have been training CrossFit and maybe they can't train CrossFit anymore, there are a lot of exercises you can do. Yeah. The kettlebell exercises, body weight exercises. Just to Just move, keep exercises. on moving, just keep to moving. feel better. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So that's really important, I would say. But is there any th special part that you can really like strengthen uh, if we look at someone that wants to come back, for example, for after after pregnancy and be <laughs> like, now I now I master this piece that I never had time to do before. Uh, but it's it's so it's really strange with the the body after like after you give birth yeah. you be, become so weak it's so strange <laughs> yeah even though you've been doing like weighted pull ups your whole pregnancy yeah like after you give birth you can't even do one it's really, I was, yeah I was really shocked after <laughs> I gave birth because I was like forty weeks pregnant felt so good training and I was like just 
<laughs> yeah, just smashing some workout. And then I was like, I remember thinking, wow, after a few days, I will be able to just train like I used to again. And it will feel even easier doing this workout. And then I came training like almost three weeks after I gave birth. And I was like, I was shocked. Because <laughs> I just, it's so strange. Doing one push up was so hard. You basically have a big hole in your uh, core, like yeah. using your core muscles. Yeah. So. It's yeah, just it's doing hard. like box jumps. It was so hard. Yeah. So I would yeah, just I mean you have to and they you also have to start easy. You have to yeah. just feel good, just and then it will like yeah, you will become yeah. stronger at yeah. the end. You I think it's very time. important. Yeah, just like go easy when you start and just really focus on like all these strength exercises, mm. like like body weight strength exercises, strict pull ups, um, strict dips squats just go slowly and then you'll like you'll be i i i felt like i i got stronger than ever when after i gave birth i just had to give it give it some time yeah start easy start easy yeah it's, uh, <laughs> i mean that's something as as uh, yeah, the most male athletes don't have uh, in their luggage and or they don't have the experience. It's very hard for uh, for any male to relate in that sense. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I think it's also very good to to uh, for <laughs> as many as possible to know about that because mm -hmm. people t t don't tend to uh, uh, share that experience. Uh, and uh, for some some might think that oh, this is not normal. And so mm -hmm. I think it's very good for people to hear that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, for some people it's true. It's some weird. Uh, my wife feels so weak. I don't know what's going yeah. on. Well, she just mm -hmm. <laughs> she just got birth. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. How you think? <laughs> yeah, it's a big it's difference. Just, yeah, I think it's just very hard to give birth to a child. <laughs> it really takes a lot of energy from you. Yeah. And I really felt like I just didn't have any energy when I went to my first training after I gave birth. I was like, but it came back. Just in, yeah, just in like, yeah, I felt better every day. And, and we can, we can see it because we have a lot of mothers training here. Mm -hmm. And we can see like in every class, they're improving. They're getting stronger, they're getting faster. And no, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Saw, it's amazing it to see. Yeah. 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 So. Um, yeah, I, I think we will start to round up and uh, yeah. Thank you very much, guys, for thank you, guys. Thank you for the time. Thank you for your yeah for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We are looking forward to seeing you in Iceland. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Soon. Two, come 20, visit us. Twenty eighteen. Promise. This is yeah. the. Yeah. This is, yeah. So yeah, yeah, this year is Chile. Then we go back to Iceland. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely welcome to Berlin anytime. Um, thank you. Yeah. We. Where can where can people? Uh, you have a homepage, I guess. It's a. Uh, uh grundy 101.is maybe yes yeah nail it of course uh and uh, social media do you have something like that of course instagram your instagram facebook yeah everything grundy grundy 101. perfect yeah. yes we'll link, yes. Those. link those to the page over there somewhere okay so um yes. thank you people for listening and uh for watching Rub. so thank you. until next time bye yes. thank you bye -bye. thank you Bye. <laughs> yeah.